Okay, good morning. Good morning, church. It's so nice to have you all, uh, the new ones and the old faces. I'm just going to go ahead and open in prayer. Um, Father, we so want to thank you today for your presence. And we want to praise you. We want to give you all the glory and honor for this opportunity to really, really honor you and your presence here. I pray, O oh Lord God, right now that even as you are amidst, uh, we're here with us. Um, I pray, O oh Lord God, that you minister to every word, every word that we share, Lord God, I share with everyone. We thank you. We praise you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so we are doing the season, uh, we are in the Advent season, so um, after hope, love, and I have been given the opportunity to speak about joy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just share what literally flows through uh, my heart and my mind, that's what I was just concentrating on the whole week. So before I actually get into the crux of the message, um, I would like all of you to, first of all, just uh, keep all your distractions away, your phones away, and, you know, take five seconds and think of that one particular moment or incident or whatever that gives you joy, okay? So just close your eyes quickly, take five seconds, and think of what gives you instant joy. And don't open your eyes till I ask you to. All right, time's up, open. Now, I want any one of you to just go ahead and shout out what just came to your mind and just, just shout out whatever. When I see Lily, I feel immense joy. Oh, great, Lily. Lily, Lily. Yes. I okay. have to. When is when I see good food? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Antonish. Second, when I see my children happy. Yeah. yeah. That's that's amazing. Thank you, Auntie Nurish. Yes. Anyone? When I was with Dave and Dave in the car, I had a joyful time. Fantastic. Great. Anyone else? Family time with love and oh. laughter and you know sitting around the table and those mm. those are such special time for sure. True, that's right. I had actual joy uh, when I'm also sharing about that is last night also I was sharing with a friend was there's a place called Greg's in London and it's that they give the best of chicken the pies <laughs> and it's still giving me joy so I can't begin to tell you how that's become like my comfort food and uh, I'm sorry but mine is my joy place is that, that. so um, the, <laughs> I will and the best was it was also in Scotland not just in England so I'm not going to go ahead more with it but um, that's joy right I mean that's one emotion which kind of uh, gives us um, you know, uh, happiness, elation, and we just moment think about it. Have you realized that joy or this emotion is associated with either a loved one or a possession or a destination, right? That is, that is what just quickly gives us that instant joy. Um, even not just that, but now, um, very quickly, I'm, I'm going to ask you again, five seconds. In that five seconds, when you close your eyes, I want you to think uh, that you are in a room, okay, by yourself, and there's no one around. There is, there is no TV, no phone, no books, no Netflix, nothing. There's no one. You're by yourself, okay? Now, go ahead and just close your eyes for five seconds again. And then tell me, that moment, what exactly brings you joy when you are just by yourself in that room? Okay. 
Okay. Here I'm not going to ask you actually what brings you joy. Okay, because that's somewhere maybe we have something that is uh, personally with, you know, something to do with us. But we might have a lot of questions. Uh, you know, what questions would just flood us. It would cloud us in our mind. And we don't know sometimes that, oh, what really brings me joy if I'm just by myself in the room? Because there's nothing around. Have you also thought that or have you also given a thought to it? Like whenever we think of joy, as I said, it's the external uh, aspect of it that brings us joy internally. Right. I mean, as we said, children, friends, food, possession, destination. And that's what brings us internal joy. But what exactly is the joy that we might experience, which is not associated with all of this? And that's exactly what I'm actually taking you on a journey on today. The reason we are associated with the word joy, with happiness and elation is because it's perceived in that way that the world around us actually deals. However, the significance of the word joy in the Bible has much deeper meaning. The biblical joy comes from the Lord. It is not based on our any possessions or circumstances like any worldly joy. So what joy is? What the Bible says, joy is described as the last thing and it satisfies the heart in a unique and marvelous way. So Warren Wiersbe is one of the writers. He, he defines joy as that inward peace and sufficiency that is not affected by the outward circumstances. That is what the joy that he's talking about. That, you know, which comes from us. So we are already in that process of being in joy. So there is no switch off or switch on. Like how we say that, you know, if I'm not there, oh no, my joy is not there. But the switch itself is within us. And it's, and Jesus always turns it on. He never turns us off. That's the joy that he's talking about. That's the joy that the word of God is talking about. So now there's another question very quickly. When someone says, oh, there is a good news, what, what is it that the traditional way someone says, um, okay, let me just give a reference. When some <laughs> lady comes and says, oh, there is a good news, <laughs> what do you think it is? The baby's coming. So the baby's coming. Yes, that's all. So, <laughs> a married woman. Okay, yes. So, I mean, while I was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what is> that? <laughs> oh, no. So thank you, Pams. So, uh, so while I was growing up, obviously, you know, that was the only uh, you know time when I used to heard there's a good news, and also obviously it was is equal to a, a you know a lady is expecting a married woman is expecting, <laughs> and that would bring that would bring joy, uh, you know, and all. Now, have you ever thought why is this connected with? Uh, uh, you know, for a baby or pregnancy. Why is this, you know, good news connected to that? Um, Luke 2, 8 to 14 says that, and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I believe the term good news goes way back, which was really considered as good because it was the birth of Christ. And it literally goes, can you imagine 2000 years back? That was the good news. And why was it good? Because Jesus is the only one who is good. We always say, right, hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I was like, you're not Jesus. But we have just come up to this, some, like, you know, because the Bible says that there is no one else is good. It's only him he is good. We are actually the bad ones. But he actually came for us and that the birth was the significance that because he is such a good, good God. Um... 
there are so many times we when uh, you know when someone says uh, you know when we come across someone and he says oh you're such a joy killer so you killed my joy or like you know he killed my joy my boss killed my joy you know she killed my joy again referring to something or someone we give that kind of responsibility or we actually make that person so important that they can kill your joy and sometimes i think why do we give that uh, opportunity or why do we give that right to someone to kill our joy you know again that is joy again which is coming externally not operating internally again happens to be like you might think or you know that why is this joy that we are talking about internally uh, which is directly comes from jesus the birth of jesus knowing the lord jesus why is it so important why is it so much necessary uh, you know as someone like me who is who is a christian or what is the significance of it uh the reason being he is someone who foreknew that we all are broken he foreknew that we come from a broken world we are fallen people who need uh him so much and he made it a point to he made it uh a choice not to just come like you know like if he would have thought to come down as a king of kings or lord of lords but he chose to just come like mere human being like you and me because he could just relate to uh what we go through like for example you know as we this is such a this is such a common line we use right you know listen you don't understand the pain i go through listen you don't understand what i have gone through but you know when to when 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 we say that line to jesus jesus says no i know what you've gone through he says i have gone through the pain he says that i know what you are uh, what you're going through so he is i mean that's why we say right perfect god so we are imperfect and perfect god because he can never he can relate to every emotion of us hence again he's good hence he knows what is joy uh Martin Lloyd Jones says that joy in other words is the response and the reaction of the soul to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is the response and knowledge just to know who is Jesus in your life um i was born in a non christian family so i had no understanding about who is jesus what they do and all but i was extremely excited about christmas all the time so while i was growing up i used to love those lights and and, and honestly i used to love uh, the silence and you know the way they used to pray and carols and all of that aspect and i grew up watching all of that and i used to love it because there was uh, we did not do anything as such in our family uh um, we used to have a lot of uh, stuff that was mostly uh, you know any religious family would do and uh, somehow i did not really know uh, what it takes to build that relationship with god so if i'm doing any worship or if i'm a part of some kind of uh, you know act that is going on in the family i had no idea what was going on i was very distant i was disconnected um but there were innumerable times that in uh, like that i had asked this question what is exactly happening i don't know i can't relate to this uh, in 2009 uh, when uh, when i hit the rock bottom of my life i lost my job in dubai i came back to india i lived with my mom uh, i had uh, i was deeply into addictions and uh, that's where i i spoke to this friend of mine in uh, in dubai and uh, we chatted and uh, on that on online he he literally spoke about 1 corinthians 13 uh, which speaks about love and he prayed and i think that was the night i uh, like i i asked like directly i was like why are you doing this he said like because you have to ask and he'll give you what you need you need hope ask him you need joy he'll give you and on i said wow that's absurd i don't know but let me just do it because i am in a place where i just i desperately need that for at least to get some sleep and um and i did that and that was the experience um that i could never ever forget because that night i slept with just telling jesus only two lines listen whoever you are i am in a mess 
if you can solve this, then I'll think about what you do in life. Literally, I said that and I slept and I woke up with this immense amount of peace, with this immense amount of hope, which I never thought I actually had and which followed with joy. I was able to experience that because what did I have? I had nothing. I had no job. I was living with my mom. And then I was, I was literally having nothing. But then he actually sowed the seed of hope and love and, you know, and joy that I could experience internally and that manifested externally. So that actually began to, uh, you know, journey of 13 years now that experiencing that love and joy. Um, coming to uh, attributes like what exactly am I talking about these joys so what exactly are these attributes of joy the first thing was for me was to um, the knowledge of Jesus as I the moment I had the knowledge of Jesus the knowledge of Christ I was able to experience it that was one of the um, one of the characteristic of, of uh, perceiving joy the other was um, repentance um, asking for forgiveness so whatever I did or whatever I did knowingly or unknowingly, I had to ask God for forgiveness in a way like even if I lied or even if I that little because as, as the Bible says that he is the perfect God. He is the holy of holy God and he is someone who also he's a just God. So I had to forgive because he forgave me for everything I have done. So I had to ask for forgiveness. So repentance actually brings me closer to God and then will make me experience joy. So that was one of the characteristics of uh, attributes of joy. And the last one is strength. Because I have the knowledge of Christ, then I have repented. Now I have a relationship with him. And now I'm going to experience and um, I'm going to actually exercise strength in spirit. Strength, strength to be there for someone who would need you as a friend, strength to pray for someone, strength to really speak love and joy in someone else's life, strength to really tell someone that not just, oh, God loves you, but no, he really does. And, you know, look at me, he loves me. Um, I have honestly struggled with joy this whole week while I'm supposed to be preaching here for joy. But I really struggled this whole week. I mean, Many reasons, I'm not going to re really say any of that right now. But one of the most important thing was that I am not happy, God. And then God just again reminded me that why are you again looking at external things to make yourself happy? I mean, you know, it's like we are always, always looking out for someone. And again, coming back to Greg's, um, it's making me happy because I'm thinking that's my place of comfort. And how many times that we go to a person or a place to find comfort? And sometimes we are disheartened that we don't get it. Like if I want to go to Greg's and they don't have the chicken, I'm going to walk out stamping my feet and saying that how dare you don't give me that today. I know. <laughs> but let's not get there. But I'm. That, that's what the comfort that we find outside externally and it's so important that we actually just, and Jesus kept reminding me, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And we, didn't, and we just keep, we don't go to, him, go to him at all. Finally, at the end, um, it's our choice. Do we choose to remain and trust our situation, our circumstance, habit, lifestyle, which will give us momentary joy? Or are we able to trust in Jesus and receive that joy which he claims which is everlasting the choice is again ours daily basis every minute for the past 13 years I have witnessed um, Christmas celebrations every year uh, and I ask this question myself every year um, does celebrating Christmas singing carols uh, decorating houses, going to places, is that really, is that giving me joy? Or the joy which is actually um, coming out of me, uh, coming out of what Jesus is doing, that's actually just the manifestation of just going out and celebrating Christmas, 
celebrating carols. I mean, that's just an outwardly expression. But again, the reason for my joy to really enjoy a Christmas party or a carol singing or just to tell, you know, hey, it's Christmas and all. Not because what's happening outside and the lit city. No, but it's internally outside. Do you know Jesus was born for you and me? He's the one who's giving joy. Not these lights. Not this. But it's Jesus who's giving us. Um, he was the one uh, who, um, who has suffered and, you know, all, through all the hardships. And uh, his promise is stronger than our earthly loved ones that will ever satisfy our needs of love and hope and joy in him because he practically manufactured all these feelings. He is the one who is manufacturer of love, hope and joy. So isn't it practical enough to go and ask him like, how do I exercise this? How do I get it? Instead of going to someone who really don't know or they have exercise. Like for example, Pavni is someone who uh, ma manufactures something. She is the one who designed it. And someone else is there who sells it. Am I not supposed to go to Pavs and ask like, you know, can you help me, uh, you know, know this is what you've designed and please share and tell me how do I exercise it? How do I live it? Instead of going through to someone who's already like a seller. So a little salesman kind of a strategy that I shared. Um, Charles Spurgeon says at the end of it, um, I would just at the at my end of the sermon, he says, believers or those who believe in Christ have accepted, accepted him as a Lord and Savior are not dependent upon circumstances. Their joy comes not from what they have, but from what they are, right? From what they are as Christians, as sons and daughters of Christ. He says that their joy comes not from what they have, but from what they are, not from where they are, but from whose they are. Not from what they enjoy, but from that what was suffered for them by the Lord. So whose we are, who we belong to, we belong to a global family, we belong to heaven. That is joy and there is no other way of expressing that. I mean, the more we kind of keep looking outside, trust me, we are going to get disheartened. Now, at the end of it, I started with a five-second game. I'm going to end it with the same. So I want you all to just, again, just close your eyes for five seconds. Okay? And I'm just going to read something. So... As our eyes are closed for five seconds, we are still in his presence now. So without concentrating on our or wandering thoughts, without thinking what's going to happen, what's for lunch, what am I going to do today, what's going to happen on Monday, I want you all to just take this moment because he's here. He is here. Ask Jesus, ask him to make you realize and know that he is your one and only joy giver. Ask him if there is any struggle that you know to know him. Or if you find joy in him, how do you find joy in him? Ask him to speak to you. And journey with you this whole time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you are the ultimate joy giver. You're amazing. You are so so good that you actually came down from heaven and became a human being 
There is no other joy other than experiencing you. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, that you're the joy giver. And thank you, Lord God, that today all of us, we pray and ask you to journey with us, O Lord God, to have that internal joy, which is everlasting and which will give us that hope and peace that we will experience this season of, of Christmas and to know you more. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.